Hello and welcome back to Joe's Art History Podcast Bite Size. Small, manageable episodes which sees me, Joe McLaughlin, your host and your resident art historian, deep dive into a specific artwork or artist in 10 minutes or less. This week we're taking a deep dive into Sarah Lucas's Pauline Bunny. Let's get started. Now, for those of you that may not know, Sarah Lucas is part of the generation of young British artists, which is often in art historical texts and terms shortened to YBAs. So if you ever heard of the YBA artists, it stands for Young British Artists. Her works frequently employ visual puns and quite on-the-nose humour by incorporating photography, collage and found objects. Lucas's first solo commercial exhibition happened with Sadie Coles in 1997 and it was called Bunny Gets Snookered, which Pauline Bunny was a huge part of and essentially the main attraction of her first ever exhibition with Sadie Coles. And funnily enough, Sarah Lucas is still with Sadie Coles, which is a huge big contemporary gallery based here in London. Sarah's work has actually been described, and I'm quoting here from an amazing extract that I found from a journalist called Lynn Barber and her work has been described quoting now not scary exactly because it's too witty for that but fueled by anger anger against pornography and men's casual denigration of women and then the journalist goes on to say that from her interpretation of Lucas's work she seems to be more annoyed about the sexualization and treatment of women than angry and that's a constant commentary throughout Lucas's work and practice and she's still working and producing incredible works today. Now Pauline Bunny is one of eight Bunny Girls sculptures which were originally formed for the installation Bunny Gets Snookered which as I've previously mentioned was first shown in 1997 at Sadie Cole's gallery in London. These eight mannequins were all individually titled Bunny except for Pauline Bunny, who was the skinniest of all the bunnies. And something that I didn't know is actually Pauline Bunny is named after Pauline Daly, who was the assistant to Sadie Coles. And I'm not too sure if she's still the assistant, but at the time she was the assistant to Sadie Coles. And this corresponds with Pauline Bunny's status as the most important and seductive of all the bunnies within this installation piece. And art historians have Debated amongst themselves, this is because contemporary fashion prefers the skinniest female form. As I said, the installation was called Bunny Gets Snookered. And to create the sculptures, to give you a sense if you're listening at home and you've never seen what this looks like, first of all, I would thoroughly recommend that you give this installation and particularly Polly and Bunny a Google. They are incredibly strange, elongated and yet somehow very feminine forms. So to create the sculptures, Lucas stuffed nude colour stockings with cushion padding and twisted them into weird hybrid and elongated body forms and gave them features such as legs and arms, as well as what has been noted as elongated bunny ears, but not bunny ears, what we would suggest a very sort of abstract air quotes, bunny ears. And it's been suggested that the glamorous and feminine connotations that stockings normally carry by stuffing them full of sort of very benign material, such as cushion paddings, is a way of sort of demystifying and reclaiming their context as just an item that women use instead of this very sort of overly sexualized item. Now, each bunny within the installation comes in a slightly different alteration, be that a different colour of their stockings that they're wearing, a different presentation as to how they are arranged, or a different piece of furniture that they're sitting on. Now, they all sit on chairs, but some of them sit on new office chairs, reclaimed office chairs. Some of them sit on hardback seats, some sit on what looks to be like school chairs that you would sit on when you were little. But what Lucas does do with each piece is sprawls the figure's legs in a very seductive and suggestive way, which exposes what would be. And the bunnies, if you will, in each chair, as well as having their legs very sort of suggestively laid out, they're also in very sort of slacked, kind of defeated positions where they're sort of imitating 
that they are post-coitus. Some historians and some of my readings said they look very drained. They look very conquered, if you will. And this is supposed to represent the object becoming a stand-in for an unresponsive sexuality, bored with desire and impartial to violence. So it's a slight commentary on women taking and owning their own sexuality instead of being these things that are merely there to please their sexual partner. It challenges the male gaze and sort of reflects that back onto women to say, take charge. You are not this thing. You are a powerful, powerful being. Now, with this in mind, let's go back to Pauline Bunny, who is the main star of this installation, if you will. And Pauline Bunny can be defined because she's wearing black stockings. And this corresponds to the highest value snooker ball on the table. Now, all the other bunnies, as I've said, they're in different presentations, different furniture, and they're in different coloured stockings. And each stocking refers to a different colour ball on the snooker table. But Pauline Bunny is wearing the black stockings corresponding to the black ball, which is the highest value ball in snooker. And... It's also showing that because it's the highest value ball, it's the only sculpture that Lucas deems worthy enough to name. I find this endlessly fascinating and a real on-the-nose commentary on society and how we covet one one thing, the it girl, the moment. And what I would like to add into all my other readings that I've found and I haven't this is my personal opinion in this is Pauline Bunny is seen as the it girl and although there are seven other bunnies that are doing and looking more or less exactly what she's doing she has had the importance placed on her because she is the thinnest she is the sexiest she is the one worth noting she is the one in the spotlight where the others are just other bunnies. I find that as a woman, a very interesting commentary. And I would like to point out here that you have to remember this was made in 1997. This was before a time of everyone having a mobile phone in their pocket. The internet was not a thing that everybody had access to. You had to physically go into these gallery spaces and see these things. You couldn't just Google them like I've done this morning and done a little bit of research on it. I can see why. I can really see why when this was shown, it blew people out of the water. It started a conversation and a really, really punchy one. And and I love it. And again, I would just thoroughly recommend that you Google these images. They are wildly seductive and and interesting to look at and think about in the context of when they were first shown and how that translates now. Anyway, so Pauline Bunny, she's the only one worth noting. She's in her black stockings, corresponds to the, the main ball on the table. And the black stockings are also used as a more sort of traditionally alluring, if you will, sexualized item of clothing so it sort of represents her as the main seductress within the installation however any power within Pauline as the seductress is very much subdued by her stance and positioning within the chair and she's very much clipped into the chair all the bunnies have this big quite chunky clip that holds them in place within the chair which very much takes out the idea that that these sculptures are there of their own accord. They have been positioned there for the male gaze. And I find that a really interesting thing to sort of ruminate on. And again, the title of the installation reinforces this reading of disempowerment. Bunny gets snookered. To be snookered, the language of the game, it means to prevent your opponent or your player from scoring. And this Pauline Bunny, as well as all the other bunny girls, are trapped by their femininity only to be knocked against each other in this game of seduction and allure and very much giving their power over to the male viewer and the masculine game. Now, the sculpture of the bunny aligns with Lucas's previous installations, moving around topics of gender roles, misogyny, and the objectification of the female body in popular culture and I saw this great thing on Tate where it says indeed in line with surrealist tradition she renders the bunny unappealing bizarre and provocative in shape 
and thereby disrupts male fantasies and the vulgarity of sexual language. And Lucas has returned to the idea of these bunny sculptures and they've eventually evolved into what is known as her more solid sculptural pieces known as nude sculptures. I find this really quite wonderful quote from Neil Brown, who is an art historian, and they describe how the bunnies were, and I quote, ranked like sexual conquests, pocketed in a horrible plumagamy by the marginal presence of the overbearing male snooker table. When playing the game, being snookered means that no points can be scored and suggests that the bunnies are contained as objects and unable to progress in the game of life. For her part, Pauline Bunny, the most slender of the bunnies, wears black stockings that corresponds with the highest value ball and snooker. Black stockings are also widely considered the most sexually alluring shade. Gordon Brun describes Lucas's fascination with the social spaces that men carve out and aggressively make their own. Snooker halls, nicotine sheds, changing rooms, truckers' cabins, public bars and dodgy urinals keep on turning up in her work. Territories from which women tend to be excluded, except as objects of casual put-downs, dirty jokes, or as pin-ups on the salted peanut cards hanging next to the pork scratchings behind the bar. For me, this is an incredible observation by Brown, who really cuts to the heart of what Lucas and her work stands for. You have been listening to Joe's Art History Podcast Bite Size, small, manageable episodes which sees me, Joe McLaughlin, your resident host and art historian, deep dive into a specific artwork or artist in 10 minutes or less. If you have enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, rate and subscribe as it helps other listeners find us. If you want to support the podcast, why not leave us a review or tell someone you know who may enjoy listening all about it. If you would like to support the future of the podcast, please consider purchasing and gifting me a book from my Amazon wishlist included in the show notes below. If you would like to get in touch, please feel free to do so. It'd be lovely to hear from you. You can email me, joesarthistory at gmail.com or you can find me via Instagram, which is at joesarthistory or you can search for my name, Joe McLaughlin, and you'll find me that way too. Finally, I've been your host and your resident art historian, Joe McLaughlin, and thank you so much for listening. Keep learning, and remember, art is for all, even in bite-sized editions. See you next time. Bye.